On my left is my personal EFXR6, which I'm currently in the process of doing a turbo intake build. And to my right is my good friend Peter's AU drift missile, which is basically his daily now. So this EFXR6 I bought about eight or nine months ago, and it was a barn find. So I was looking on Facebook Marketplace. I was in the market for an EF or ELXR6 because I've always wanted one. And to be honest, it's one of my Aussie dream cars. If Even if I didn't do YouTube, I reckon I still would have bought one of these because they, for some reason, I really love them. And a lot of people do as well. So this thing I bought for $3,000. It came with an engine that wasn't running, a gearbox that wouldn't shift into first, and a bunch of other problems, obviously. I mean, look at it. The bumper, it's got a cracked headlight. The interior is actually pr in pretty good condition, but there were rats living in it, so it was pretty disgusting. But I had my mate clean it all up, and it's looking pretty good now. If you're in a market for a Ford Falcon that you're gonna use for drifting, or just to own, I reckon I would personally buy an EF, because I think they look so good that it overcomes all of its downfalls as compared to an AU. So my favorite part about the car is its iconic front end. You have the four headlights, you got the sort of shark, like it looks like a shark. It's, I think it's a pretty timeless design and I don't think you can even compare the look of this car to the AU, but that's personal preference. I was in the market for an for an E-Series, especially an XR6, because of the four headlights. These cars look a lot more aggressive in the front end than an AU. Even if you're comparing an XR AU to an XR e EF or EL, or even an ED, I think that these look more timeless. I think they have a much better presence on the road as well. The fact that they are a lot, they're a lot sleeker, the body lines, like it looks, I don't, know how to, I don't know how to explain it, it just looks very aggressive. And even like the font here, like that just, that just screams, you know? Especially the Tickford badge, that's probably my favorite part. If these cars didn't have such an online presence, you would look at this car and you just go, it's an NPC car. No way! Looking good, Carlos. Carlos, my man. You all good, Carlos? Keep working hard, Carlos. But because People like the Mexican Hoon Cartel, AU Drift Society, AU House. There's a lot There's a lot of online presence. And obviously it's because of the front end. They're a bit goofy looking. I think that's, that's what people like about them. But in reality, they drive a lot better than they look. Obviously, if you get the XR variant, you're gonna have the four headlights. But I think they're just too big, too bulbous, you know, too voluptuous as compared to that one. It's minimalistic. It's a very futuristic design element because a lot of cars nowadays, they're going for the more minimalist approach. I think the AU is just too, much like the 2000s, it's just a bit too big. And you know, I think Ford sort of, they could have just stuck to their roots a bit more in that sense. The next thing that I want to talk about is the interior. Now, in my personal opinion, EF, EL, I think have a better interior than AUs. And I think the seats are more comfortable as well. And I know I'm going to upset a lot of people by saying that. But I've owned both. I used to own a silver AU, which unfortunately is no longer with us. I found that on longer drives, the EF has more comfortable seats. So if you take a look in here, the EF has, obviously this is an XR, XR6. So it has uh, nice bolstering on the seats. Uh, I think the seat base as well is more comfortable. And moving on as well, I think overall the interior looks better. Like I like the gauges as well. There's nothing like fancy about them. Like the AU, it has like, you know, the rev counter, like it all looks a little bit too 2000s. <laughs> it all looks a little bit too 2000s to me. I prefer the 90s look. It all just looks a bit too round and a bit too, how can I say? A little, a little, yeah, it's just, it just doesn't look good, especially the series one. Oh my God. The Series 1 AU is like a crime against humanity. It's simple, it's versatile. You got your aircon, you got your clock, which doesn't work in this car, and you got your radio. That's it. As I was saying about interiors, if you look at this one, it just looks a little bit too pedestrian. There's, it's, there's nothing special about it. There's no like old fashioned charm to it. It's just, it's a bit, it's a bit boring, you know, it's just, it's just a bit boring, but 
does work, it does do the job. These carry over the same issues with the saggy headliner, the window regulators, the door lock actuators. It's all the same. It, they're both Fords at the end of the day, but I feel like if you're gonna own a shit box, you want it to look the part. AUs are notorious for having saggy headliners, broken sunglass holder, broken bonnet latches. The window regulators love to die on these things. I think whether AU has the EF beat, and this is purely based on technological progression, are the engines. The EF usually would come with an inline six cylinder, four liters, of course. This one, not so much. It's, uh, it's currently a work in progress. Believe it or not, it was actually quicker than an AU, a race to Rex H's AU. Basically, it's good to know that this will at least keep up with an AU, even though the engine's older, a little bit less technologically advanced. This one, on the other hand, is the legendary 4-litre Intec. As you can see, these are bulletproof engines. You don't even need to service them. Service intervals are every 800,000 kilometres. They do have their issues. Intake manifold gaskets, leaky, everything, coil packs. But once again, it's a Ford. So if you're going to break down, you want to at least look good. Now, unfortunately, the EF does have its drawbacks compared to the AU. Ford did make a lot of improvements with the AU. Like, I'm not gonna deny that at all. And the first thing, and this is one that I've personally had a lot of problems with, is the front end on this car. And so we're gonna be dealing with that very shortly. The next video, you're gonna see what we're gonna do with it. So I'm not gonna spoil it just yet. The front end on this car, it's out of a horse and carriage. The only thing it's missing is some leaf springs. Basically, the only thing going for it is that it has disc brakes and ABS, and that's about it. The calipers are about this small. They don't really pull the car up that well. Uh, another thing is they have tapered roller wheel bearings, which Anyone that's had experience in them, especially full drives, they are shit, especially for a road car. So this brings me on to my next point. AUs, the front end suspension was good enough on these cars that they used them on BA, BF, and they also use them on territories. From a serviceability point of view, you can do everything yourself at home. You can do everything yourself on the E-Series, but I think this is just a, a lot easier to work with. There is a lot more aftermarket support for these as well. Like I said, AU House, a drift society, all that. You can get lock kits for these. What a house have done that take where the tie rod bolts into the into the upright, chop out a bit, they weld it shut. So cut and shut knuckles, you get more lock. So this is a knuckle and upright assembly from an AU. What they basically did is they made a jig, they shortened it, and there you go. That's what you get. With E series, you can't do that because the where the tie rod bolts to the knuckle, it's already too far in, and they don't even have that much lock stock so like i said if you're going to use it for drifting you're going to use it for just you, you want more angle forget it put an au subframe in so long story short if you have a little bit more money and you care about how the car looks get an e-series it's worth the headaches trust me it's a really fun car to drive if you're just looking to take a car to the track and you don't care about how it looks because it's gonna be wrapped around a bollard anyway. AU Falcon, very good car, but it's a little bit hard to get past the look of them. But whilst I have you guys here, I'll give you guys a bit of an update about what's been going on behind the scenes. We have another red shit ape in the garage. This is Ollie's E36 BMW. It's a M50 B25, and in short, it's basically the German 1J. It's a good car, massive shit ape though. Obviously, we have the AU motor that's going in the EF as well. Been chipping away at it slowly, been super busy with other commitments, finishing up my apprenticeship and stuff. All you COVID apprentices will know how I feel right now. This has been slowly, slowly getting worked on. I've been learning how to weld. So I started by welding up the flapper on the exhaust housing of the turbo. Ollie welded on a dash 10 AN fitting. So that'll be for the oil drain from the turbo. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I really, truly apologize for being absent for over a month. I've had a lot of commitments with finishing my apprenticeship and stuff like that, but I have a lot of exciting content coming up and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one.